bombing attack, the people of this country, the civilian population, would be divided instantly into three groups. Those beyond help, those who need help, and those who can help. This is a fact, a grim fact that more people understand than ever before. These people are facing facts, not play acting. Although they are playing the parts of those who need help and those who can help. All across the country, civil defense is in action. Put in action by the people of over 2,000 communities who recently staged grimly realistic, yet hopeful and courageous civil defense exercises. Our Congress set this pattern of defense that leaves the responsibility for acting on the facts to the personal initiative of each of us. Responsible leaders are using every means and media to tell us facts we must know to survive. The free press of America reaches millions with countless variations of one vital fact. Survival under atomic attack depends on preparedness. Radio scripts prepared at the National Civil Defense Headquarters are used by thousands of radio stations with the help of their local civil defense directors. More millions of us learn simple, basic principles of survival from radio transcriptions. Firefighting, for instance. Did you know, in the last war, Hiroshima was not entirely blown up. It burned down within a few hours after the A-bomb burst. Major radio networks present as a public service many programs that reach into the core of civil defense, the American home. Television stations the nation over are giving generously of talent for special programs and time for special announcements to help build awareness. Civil defense is your business. Your country needs you today. Join the warden service. There's a place in civil defense for you. Volunteer for civil defense now. Theater television piped to strategically located key cities for limited audiences of police and volunteers helps teach special skills to key men and women.
with like closing blinds, shutting off stoves and pulling electric plugs can save lives if disaster strikes. Sparked by well-knit local civil defense organizations, over 40 million Americans have taken action during realistic exercises, like this one in Los Angeles. Newsreels record the drama of people learning to protect themselves. And in our theaters, we can learn how preparedness saves lives. Recently, when giant sirens in New York City wailed out a practice warning, 400,000 civil defense workers took action. And action speaking louder than words told the world of our stiffening national backbone. Authorities tell us trained rescue workers can cut casualties as much as 50%. After the exercise, thousands more signed up for civil defense. As the posters that cover the nation tell us, we must take action. Exhibits capsule survival information to help build strength through knowledge. done by its larger neighbors, stages a demonstration that says, Mister, if you start any fires here, we'll drown them out. We'll learn how to save lives so well it won't be worth your while to drop any bombs on us. We are all learning. But there is no room for complacency. Far from it. In the words of Mr. James Wadsworth, acting Federal Civil Defense Administrator, Millions of Americans now know that their civil defense program is a fact instead of a plan. Civil defense is now a permanent part of our daily lives, as it will be for years to come. Today, civil defense can serve the nation in peacetime disasters and if war comes. In the months ahead, the people on Main Street will see a great deal more of civil defense in action as the newest senior partner in our national security program. Our progress is due in great part to citizen leadership and to the remarkable support which civil defense is receiving from the nation's information media. We've made a good beginning, but only a beginning. Only a beginning. The Alert America convoys, 30 huge truckloads of civil defense exhibits that roll down the main streets and highways and byways visiting 82 communities did not find an alert America, only an awakening America. The displays and dioramas the trucks carried helped make us aware, helped open our eyes to teach us what to do, but we the people must do it. We must respond to the need for blood. Civil Defense has joined forces with the Red Cross and with the military to help increase blood collections and build the essential reserves of life-saving plasma. The radio industry and our government working together have devised a plan called Conrad. This plan assures us that vital survival information will always guide us, but confuse the enemy. We must have more volunteers for the Ground Observer Corps. 152,000 men and women regularly scan the skies in Operation Skywatch. But it will take 500,000 pair of trained eyes to continuously scan our skies. And working directly with the Air Force, cut seconds that may mean thousands of lives from the time it takes to alert and put interceptor jets in the air. on a 50-50 partnership basis with the federal government. 
but we need far more for war emergencies. During many natural disasters, civil defense volunteers have already put the time value of civil defense and the need for more trained emergency workers. In the event of a mass atomic attack, which we must be prepared to face, not the four million workers we now have, but many more trained civil defense workers would be required to check the flood of a national disaster. Organized, trained men who know how to save life and property do just that when disaster of any kind strikes. We know that if unchecked, a small fire becomes a devastating conflagration. A thousand, a million Americans who know how to put out small fires add up to some of the most valuable insurance our nation can possess. We must be prepared to meet any enemy threat of any kind. New and potentially devastating weapons demand new defense skills. The magnitude of the kind of disaster we must be prepared to face presents the most complex training and largest community organization challenge our country has ever faced. The National Civil Defense Headquarters, a school to train local leaders in the many essential skills, looks like a campus of destruction and debris, but it is scientifically planned to teach local leaders how to save lives. Here they and we can be spectators. Here we can observe and learn, and we must learn, for if there should be a real atomic attack, there will be no spectators, only those who need help, and those who can.